Hello, hello, everybody. Welcome to A Spork of Ice and Fire, where we talk mostly about the world of A Song of Ice and Fire, Game of Thrones, House of the Dragon, uh, the book series. Uh, but we also will probably add other fantasy novels and series to the list, like Harry Potter, uh, with the new series coming up and stuff like that, going over that. But right now, we're going to stick with A Song of Ice and Fire, and we're going to discuss what-if moments. You know, because the MCU just had their what if series. So I was wondering what if, you know, certain things happened in the world of A Song of Fire, Ice and Fire. How would it have changed it? And tonight we're going to be just talking about Starks. Uh, and with us tonight, we have the lovely Bad Takes Bojan. How are you? I'm doing very well. I hope everybody else is having a fabulous Monday. We're also freezing our butts off here in the Midwest. It was yeah. negative 11 outside when I got up this morning, and it was <laughs> negative 29 wind chill when I went to the mailbox that was run over by a plow truck over the weekend. So, Oh, yay. man. <laughs> oh, that sucks. That <laughs> sucks. But, hey, we will. You're you're ready for the north, so that's good. All right. Exactly. Uh, yeah, you're ready for the winter in the north. Winter is coming. Uh, we, so stay, stay warm. Um, but we do also have, uh, from down under where it's 40 degree or 20 degrees Celsius, 70 something degrees Fahrenheit. Mr. Grant Gregory. Hey, yo, and happy to be here. You love to talk about, um, all things in Song of Ice and Fire. So, um, yeah, no, winter isn't coming for me. We've already, we've already had that. We're, we're, we're in summer. I'm in a singlet. Yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 You're in the summer. You're in Dorn. You're in Dorn. Yeah. That's cool. That's cool. You know what else? What else is cool is five dollars super chat from our boy, our friend, Storyman Jack for five bucks. He says Starks more than we will get from George, most likely. Uh, telling actual stories over here. Love y'all. Keep going, Spork. Yeah, dude. If you guys are not, if you're watching this later or you're watching this live, check out Storyman Jack's uh, channel. He's he's a true author. Um, you know, it's not just a hobby. He is an author, author, and he has some great series he d did for Halloween. He has some cool stuff going on right now, some detective type stuff. Uh, I would go check him out. You can find uh, him at Storyman Jack, I believe, on YouTube at Storyman Jack, or uh, go check out Twitter, Storyman Jack over there. He it links everything to his um, YouTube channel and stuff, and I think you guys would enjoy it. Thank you very much, my friend. I, I appreciate the five bucks. Uh, you can also become a uh, channel member if you like. The link is pinned to the top. Because um, uh, once was mine was lost with YouTube demonetizations. But it is back. So if you'd like to come back into the world, please do. The lovely Sherry is here. It's it's only 21. Yeah, I'm. I think I'm around the same temp as you. I believe it's about... I know it was like 24 five when i looked at like six o'clock and now the sun is definitely down and it's eight o'clock here so we're probably down there too um man squatch is here hal hal to you all and uh yeah let's um let's get into it so we've done kind of what ifs here before just never dedicated a whole podcast even though i don't do podcasts uh someday we'll put this up just audio uh but I kind of like the what if series. I think it's interesting to think about. Uh, most of the time we go for the, the most obvious ones. So what if, you know, what if he, Ned Stark didn't warn Cersei? And, you know, there's a lot that goes with that. But the one I want to start with, because I find this most interesting, is what if Ned was allowed to take the black? So Ned Stark, you know, he's in Magor's um, Holdfast. Yeah, where is that? That um, I think it's like Magor's Keep, that area right out in front of it. And they're in the the square, the yard, and he, you know, tells everybody he's a lying piece of shit. And uh, they're totally a Baratheon, even though they have blonde hair. And Joffrey does not let Littlefinger manipulate him and actually sends Ned north with Yorin. What would happen? Now, we got to take into effect Ned leaving with Yorin means now Arya doesn't have to go with him. And, you know, his daughter, uh, Sansa, is staying there. Will she marry Joffrey? Will she? Will that be annulled or, or, you know, canceled? What do you guys think? Let's just start with Ned leaving King's Landing that day with Yorin. 
what happens to his house in King's Landing? What happens to the girls? Don't Ooh, feel free. I, jump in. I, I think I think the big thing with Ari is like, what what would change much with her though? A lot. She'd still, she'd, she'd still want to get away. Like, do you think he'd want her to stay in King's Landing? Well, this is it. She would have to leave, but it's it's now done in a more civil way. There's they're not trying to murder her house. Like Ned is leaving. He is peacefully so going leaving with her. They'll stop by Winterfell on the way. to the wall, I was wondering right? that too. Would they just take her with them or would, cause the house isn't murdered. So you have, uh, the Septa still there. You have mm-hmm. the household guards still alive. Would Ned, like, would she leave automatically with Ned and a bunch of thieves? And you know, no, she would probably leave. Cause I thought the same thing before when I was thinking through this, she would probably wait till the household is ready to go, which, you know, they most likely are prepared because he's been in the dungeons for a while. Um, Mm -hmm. She would leave with the household and Sansa would be left alone, still engaged or would they annul that right away? And she would be leaving with the house too. I I was thinking about that too. I don't know. I don't think they did annul the engagement yet until perhaps uh, Tywin thinks about having her betrothed to Tyrion or to someone else because it's almost like um, having, you know, Sansa for- fostered in a bad way at King's Landing where she's kind of the hostage to make yeah. sure that the uh, Starks behave because, you know, Ned got his mercy and was allowed to take the black. Right. Or they, they force her to marry um, Ta- Tommen. You know, instead of marrying the mm-hmm. king, he marries yeah. the king's brother. That that would that would make sense, um, right? Because you're now so, still a hostage. Yeah, um, essentially, with I mean, it's the same scenario with how Ned became, um, uh, uh, what do you call it, the, the leader of the household. His brother took the black, so it would literally go to the the next day, which would be Rob. Um, whether they want whether. They'd want to do something about that. I don't mm-hmm. know. Um, I think it actually does because I think what what that does is it actually weakens Winterfell more by having him take the black. They're not as Ned's not a martyr anymore, so they don't right. have a cause to fight for. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, so I, I that changes everything. I from. Uh, his marriage proposal and everything else. I mean, one would assume that they would want Rob to get married right away, though, if he yes, inherited, if he saying, became the Lord of Winterfell. Out. And with him Absolutely. being the legal and rightful heir, then yeah, he's um, definitely not even there. He is. He would automatically become the next lord. Yeah. Yeah. So who would? He, okay. So. Ned, but, they, but, but, but Joffrey and the small council wouldn't make sure that he has um, pledged his loyalty to the and his house to the crown, especially things that the previous the previous um, you know. Laws. Would they make him uh, marry Marcella? I yeah, I was about to say it. same thing. Yeah, I mean, yeah. they have all the power right now, and I just want to say a quick hello to Fast Fifty S ninety one. I like the name. Um, yeah, I would think Tywin's smart. He is going to either destroy their family or or control that family. And the easiest way to control them is through through blood. So mm-hmm. you don't want Sansa Stark marrying your son because or your grandson that's going to become king because it just doesn't look good. Her, his father, you know, the disgraced, gone to the black. Um, so. I could see him, okay, maybe a cousin like, or, or Tommen or a cousin, like, uh, what's mm-hmm. his name? Uh, the one that like gives up all what? his possessions. Oh, uh, yeah, the one that joins the fight. The, Lan- yeah, Lance- Dar- Lancel. Lancel, Lancel, right. You got Lancel or, or Tommen, you know, something like that. And then uh, would you allow a princess to marry Rob or would you even go one of your uh, loyal retainers marry like uh, that's the one because that's a big you deal like a princess is enough. a big de- go ahead Sorry, please. You, you no. need something something powerful enough 
to make sure that Rob never thinks twice about possibly maybe backing some type of right, right. So it would have to be a princess then, I guess. Maybe, yeah, that that can work. But you can't put all it's not your line of succession, or I mean, if she wishes, she's pretty darn far down the list. Well, yeah, no woman. Yeah, no. So. You're right about that. It would go to like, if, let's say Joffrey and Tom and died. I don't think it would. It go to Rob? Would he be the then king? I don't think so. It would probably yeah. maybe only, only with a whole hell of a lot of power. Yeah, yeah. I mean, because Cersei did usurp the throne. Sorry. Right. No, don't worry, Grant. What What were you saying? The same thing in the series. The same thing happened with Cersei. She was never blood aligned for the, for for being the queen. Right, the queen. McQueen. Right, so she kind of you. I almost feel like she usurped a bit, but um, you know, she went from regent to queen. You're right about that, though. I mean, it probably should have gone to another male heir of Tywin's, you know, or of Roberts. You know, it shouldn't have gone to her. Tywin's brother. Yeah, yeah. Or I mean, maybe it would go to if his male descendants are dead. Speaking of Roberts. Wouldn't it go to one of his brothers then? It wouldn't right. go out of the Baratheon house. Exactly. So I think Mansquatch is a pretty pretty um, decent idea. Is the fact that um, if Rob were to marry Marcella, then her entire royal guard would go to Winterfell. Oh, sure. so yeah, that's stay true. There. So now you've got a permanent presence besides your daughter, and maybe a, right. you know a scepter or two. You've got a royal guard there. Yeah, no, that's true. I didn't think of that. Oh, yeah. They would have a presence within Winterfell. I mean, not a big enough one, but a big enough one to make Rob think twice. You know, would it, would he want to lose some of his men in a fight with them? Um, and, and they just ears uh, the, you know, ladies in waiting, the maids, the septa that comes with her. You know, like all these people are going to be listening to what is said in Winterfell. So, yeah, you got control of Rob. So now, OK, so Ned gets to the wall. And I, and I believe Arya would be back in Winterfell. I believe uh, Sansa would be trapped in King's Landing as a hostage and maybe married to Tom and most likely maybe to Lancel or something like that. And then you got now Ned at the wall. So Ned Stark, I mean, the Starks of Winterfell are huge presence at the wall. I mean, Benjen, I know he's been there longer, but Ned is like a lord. A true lord. He was the warden of the north. So I don't see him taking over right away. But after the death of Mormont, you know, if he died, you, you know, maybe of natural causes or a battle with the whites, you know, would Ned become not John, but Ned would now become, you know, the uh, 90, 900th and 99th uh, commander of the, the watch. There's, there's no way in the world Ned doesn't become Lord Commander. Yeah, There's no universe where that. The, I can't imagine it either. Like he, his presence alone would make men follow him, like and yeah. want him to lead. I mean, he's he this was isn't just a disgraced lord. This is right. The this is the warden, the right? And also a bit a war hero in the you know usurping of or the killing of the Mad King. Um, many of the people there only survived because the Starks provide for them. The extra amount of money, armor, uh, even men from their jails, men, you know, the second sons from the north, because they they say in the books, it, it's still prestigious in the north to be part of the watch until you get there and you realize it's a bunch of fucking rapists and this <laughs> and that. But in the north, you think as a second son, you know, I'll, I'll join the watch or a third son, you know, but um, what what would his relationship with John be like? What do you guys think? He'd actually get to have one. John would be pissed off at him um, for for everything, um, and I think John will be he'll be a completely different character. He'll be more more um, he'll toe the line more. Yeah, he'll have, yeah, he'll yeah. have someone there that can put him in check. Ned yeah. wouldn't let him run off with a wild. He's like all the stuff with Mance Raider and everything. Ned would never do that. It's like right. a, we have our allies. 
We, mm -hmm. we find our allies. We work with our allies. We don't try and make new allies of our enemy. Yeah, I, th I think I could see that too. But if it, um, and real quick, I, I'm glad you brought this up that we're talking book, not, not series. So, um, cause we, a lot of us, and I do too, I get it confused sometimes what happens, you know, like how things happen in the books don't really happen. And, you know, the series does it differently. Um, and there's one big one I just realized, uh, while I was thinking of this stuff and it'll come up when we're talking about, but so you don't think if it was the battle for humanity, Ned would try to save or uh, connect with the wildlings? I don't know. I don't think it would, I don't think it would go down. Like the reason why it worked for Gong was because um, Gong was being brash about it. He was being brave and bold and everything right. like that. Where Ned would, Ned would try and find, he'd try and talk to Ned's greater lord to lord, which wouldn't have worked. Right. Yeah, Ned, you know what, you're right You're right in a fact where Ned is probably very solid in his ideas of what the wildlings are. John was young, you know, mm -hmm. and kind of impressionable. I mean, he got laid, so that kind of changes everything. You know, because Ned wouldn't have been sent out on a secret miss mission to become like a wildling. You know, so that whole thing with John, I don't even know if John would be sent. That with him. Right. Now, would anything, would anything change with... Um... What's his face? <laughs> married all of his daughters uh, and killed all oh, his, yeah. uh, his uh, boys. Uh, um, um, what would have changed about that happening? Would just Ned's presence. Be... Ned's presence, I think, would make Craster think twice about being so... I just called him Crowder. Fucking Crowder. 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 <laughs> hey, Crowder. <laughs> <laughs> no difference. Um, yeah. No, <laughs> no Craster, like I think he... You know, the Starks are like... They're, all, they're mythical. The name Stark is mythical. You know, they have been around for millennia, 10,000 years, you know, being, you know, wargs and always being, you know, the the Starks of Winterfell. Like, I don't think he would be as brash and as um, the, as the, bold the, to the way the he ruling, talks, you know. Yeah, the ruling class. He's a part of the ruling class. Yes. It's a smaller local class. That's the difference. Yeah, no, good way of putting it. He is part of the ruling class, not not like Moramont, who's a disgraced, not, not a disgraced lord, but he stepped down as lord because for his son, took the black, his son's disgraced, and it's a little island. Like, this is Ned Stark of the North. Like, I, I think he would think twice about being disrespectful to him when they need to stop there for provisions and stuff. And I don't know how Ned would react to, you know, daughter fucking. I don't know if he would, because it would be pretty damn obvious. I don't know if he, um, you know, because of his morals and his honor, would he do something about it? I. It's not his land. You know what I mean? Like, I don't think he would. I wonder what free folk of the fandom would think, but he can't be here tonight. So make sure you guys check out his channel because we got him above like 75 subscribers last week. He was at like 60 something. So if you do not know free folk of the fandom, guys, please. Mason's a great guy. Please let's help him get over a hundred subs. He's been on my channel for like a year and a half, two years now. And I didn't realize he wasn't over a hundred subs. So we need to get him up and above. And then we have a star in the uh, chat, the beautiful pink Pam 86 and her lovely. I love watching her. Um, she goes around to different like, you know, universal and Disney and does like tours for people live. And I met her down in Orlando. Really nice young lady. Um, and she has a fun channel and she's very personable and you should check it out if you haven't. Um, really, if you've done a Harry Potter one, I haven't seen it, but I want to see the Harry Potter world. So if you could, if you ever do that, that'd be great. But she's saying, just stopping by to say hello to one of my favorite YouTubers. Oh, she looks sweet. I am pretty, pretty awesome. Right. <laughs> Anywho, uh, let's get, thanks for stopping by. Let's get back to it though. Um, yeah. What would you think? Ned, He's honorable, but that do you think he would cause trouble for Craster? I don't know about that. I think he I think would um he would try and use his lordliness over uh, over him and basically be like, You don't want me as an enemy. Yeah. I don't think yeah, but... he would go, Well, we're going to war with Craster sort of thing over it. Um I said, I still think he'll find because he literally just stepped up stepped in the boundaries and that got him here. I think he'll have a huge amount of reflection of what he's done. Right. 
how much of Sam's story would change because Sam probably wouldn't have survived the first few weeks of training, let alone, let alone gone to Craster's Keep to run into Gilly and her baby. You know, this is a good question right now because I didn't think about this before we started talking about when would he reach the wall? How long does John have with Sam before he even knows his dad? You know, all that stuff that happens. How long does he like before he even knows he's coming? Because maybe a raven would get there before them. But I mean, that trip is probably two to three months to the wall from. Or one scene in season eight. Or yeah, unless you have finger, uh, little <laughs> fingers like, you know, you can just shoot through there and go. Um, Magical uh, <laughs> transfer. uh... yeah 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 i know uh ned's honor supersedes that i mean it's huge his pragmatism yeah absolutely but um he is no longer a lord he is not even the lord commander of the night's watch he may not even be a ranger when they go there he is one that follows the rules and if if lord uh commander moramont doesn't say a word i don't think ned would he might talk to Mormont after the fact, because I know Mormont, I mean, that was his liege lord, Ned Stark. So he's going to listen to him, but I don't know how much he can do at the beginning of this. But, you know, where in the arc of John does Ned, all right, Ned gets killed at the end of Game of Thrones. Let me see if I can find it. Hold on. Where's my Game of Thrones book? Wish I had it right here like I did the day before. Um, where's John in the story? Because then we just have to add, you know, like maybe a quarter of a book to a half a book more till he gets there. So in A Clash of Kings, he would be, he wouldn't get there for a while. So it does change a lot. I mean, do the night, the, the whites already attack before Ned gets there? And so he's actually never seen a white still, you know, so does he believe it or not type stuff? I don't know. That's a really good point. Yeah. Where are my, uh, where are my YouTube friends that, you know, like, uh, Brian and you guys and man squash, uh, where do you think Ned would be in John's story when he gets there? Like is John already out? Did he already go to Crestor's keep once, you know, that first ranging, um, I think that happened yet. Yeah, when does it? I can't even think of it in off yeah. the top of my head. I'm gonna have to look I real quick. That was like quite late in the book. Uh, Clash of Kings. Uh, yeah, I'm sure it's Clash of Kings. Yeah, let's see, John, John chapters. Uh, do, 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 do. You know, I I didn't think when I first bought this computer it was like oh gaming keyboard great the clicking is so freaking annoying like i wish i just had like an old school quiet you know like <laughs> just quiet <laughs> um all right so let's see chapters so okay doo, doo, doo. Nah, which one book is this this is game of thrones don't need that all right so clash of kings we have six chapters john one John 2 is 13th chapter. So I'm going to jump all the way to John 3, which is the 23rd chapter of the book. The Night Watch finally finds people at Craster's Keep. Okay, so um, this is John's first, in, in John 3 of Clash of Kings, his first uh, meeting at Craster, Craster's is this chapter. So this, like, they must have got there at the very end of chapter uh, John 2, and they're now here. Um, uh, do, 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 do. they have been six days in the rain. So they've been, you know, they finally get to Craster's keep. So, okay. So now let's say that's the 23rd chapter. I bet you John, uh, Ned gets there maybe around that time. So they're out. They're out. John isn't even at castle black when Ned gets there. So now Ned has time to talk to who? But would he, but the thing of it is, would he go knowing that his dad's coming? Say that one more time? No, I mean, would it he, depends. I'm I sorry, I, I heard what I you said. He would, I think he would wait around for, for Ned. How could I he if he was told to go? Because he's, that's his story. He always disobeys orders. <sighs> I don't know about that one, dude. He didn't have anything to lose before. 
I, well, okay, let's just see. I don't think maybe Lord Marmont says, "Wait for your dad." Maybe he does. He probably would, wouldn't he? Because I mean, he's a green, he green like, boy. He, he goes, "Oh, by the way, where's you know, where's my son?" It's like I just sent him out on the mission, and by the way, he's dead. Yeah. Um. What do you say? I just rewatched the show a few months ago. However, I've yet to read the book, dude. If you like the show as much as I did up until a certain point, like if you loved the show between episode or season one to four, and maybe you know, maybe up to six, but I would definitely say one to four. Read the books because they're really good. They're, I mean, what we got. All right, so. I, I kind of have to agree with you on that one. I was hoping John wouldn't be there because my feelings were, but I, most likely we're doing a what if. So most likely John would, Mormont would have him stay and wait for his father. Um, it, it, if it helps any in uh, chapter 52, which is uh, uh, John chapter, uh, John chapter seven, mm -hmm. it says that at this point, when they find the bodies, north mm -hmm. of the wall it uh they estimate that benjamin's been gone for six months at that point <laughs> okay and wasn't so, he only just a few weeks ahead of john going back to the wall uh he i mean didn't did john see him before he left john had uh, commun yeah because benjamin came home for the yeah came uh, home king visiting yeah yep. so and there then they left. I didn't think it was more than a month in between when Benjamin left and then John followed. No, Benjamin and John were left, I believe, at the same time, if not very close. Mm -hmm. Because it was like a whole group of. Yeah, Benjamin left yeah, with ben, them because ben Benjamin and Tyrion had like not the yeah. greatest traveling partners with each other. So they let. He brought him to the wall. So there yeah, was no. They would, they so would, that means he's. I mean, John's been at the wall for six months before they find the bodies. Well, I'm. I'm trying to think. Uh, oh, right. Oh, okay, I see what you're saying. The bodies that um, he went at the, to at openings, right? Where they find yeah. the bodies from the opening chapter of yeah. a, a Game of Thrones. It's. They say that at that point, Benjamin's been gone for six months. Okay, so the bodies that they uh, bring back and the ones that come alive, you're saying, and he's been gone for six months. So if he's been gone for six mm -hmm. month, months and he and John were at the wall for a little bit together, because there are some moments when they're there together and he asks to go with them and Benjamin won't let him. So if oh, that's, that's six, fine. yeah, if that's six months, Ned being, getting his head chopped off, or not now, um was maybe in the third to fourth month. Cause I'm trying to think how long Ned was in King's landing for. It seemed to be, I thought he was there for at least a half a year before shit started really going down. It's hard to, you know, it's really hard to gauge too, because there are moments in the books where you, you can tell that, uh, characters ahead of another character you know in in the storyline like this is and, happening and in the future of the right like books are in four as well, yeah so. oh god yeah. yeah 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 between three and four it's very confusing but like even in game of thrones there's moments where they don't line up like uh, this is happening at the same exact moment one could be happening a week ahead or two weeks behind well, like that's, that's the thing about George's writing it's, it's not in order right it's, it's, it's character based so, yeah, it's confusing. Yeah. Right. Like, Tyrion's because, story could be a week, but it takes up 20 pages. Right. Yeah, Sansa's story yeah. could be a month in the same amount of time. Yeah, because there's 12 chapters between John, between them locating the bodies and Ned dying. So it seems like it would have happened right about the same time. Right. Um, I'm just checking one thing real quick. So he's at least six months and then another two to three months to get to the wall. John yeah, that's why I've been there for nine, ten months. Yeah, that's what I'm trying to figure months. out right now, because there are people that like I love I love the Internet because people have figured out like distance. Um, oh, that's so cool. <laughs> yeah, they like they, they, they figured it out like how far it was. So since much game of conflict to do. do, do 
Winterfell and King's Landing are 1,460 miles apart. Um, so on horse, it would take over, oh, it would just take roughly 12 to 13 days to go from King's Landing to, now that's just horseback, like not mm -hmm. carriages and stuff, but it would take about 12 to 13 days so up to two weeks to get to, if you're going at a, a solid pace to get from Winterfell to King's Landing. And that makes sense because when they were going, they had that humongous Cersei cart. So it took much mm -hmm. longer. So let's right. say it takes, let's say it will be, we'll give it a little on the slow side, 14 days. So if it takes 14 days to get there, I'm wondering the distance because the wall is pretty high up there, but Winterfeld's up there pretty far yeah. too. It, don't it forget we have that interactive map if you need it. it. What's that? Boy. Wait a minute. First, uh, Tina, what did you say? I said, don't forget we have that interactive map if you still want, because that's what I've been looking oh, at. Oh yeah, too. where is that? Just to locate. Uh, let me let me put a link in the private chat and see. Okay. If, uh, that's the correct one. Uh, do, 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 do. Yep, that's it. I'm going to share that. All right. Yeah, Bear with us, everybody. Doing. I forgot and we I, were even talking to other people in the chat. I'm so sorry. I get into my own world when I'm doing this stuff. How <laughs> dare you? I know. And, then, and I clicked both uh, uh, Eddard Stark and Jon Snow's uh, check boxes. So it should yeah. be the. They're too, they're too long. Oh yeah, maybe I should add that to the. I hate you guys. Uh, you know, it's all. Uh, it's all. Um, what Mad's problem? Whoa, sorry about that. All right, so we're going. Ed and John by chapters. So let's yeah. go. Uh, so we're still. Uh, it's about a Game of Thrones chapter 60 is where it shows John north of the wall and uh, Ned still alive in yeah. uh, King's Landing. He's still down in King's Landing. Yeah, okay, so. Find the point where Ned is dead. So That's we'll what I'm trying to do. It's yeah. Like one or two chapters from now, if you. Go forward, you know, use a little blue yeah. arrow. If you don't want to, yeah, if you're well, afraid you're going to fight. Is it, it do, will it show him dead? Like, how do you know yeah, he's it dead? Shows a, yeah, it, it shows a skull on. instead of the E. Oh, okay. So, I just, so like, click the, bla uh, the gotcha. blue arrow yeah. there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Times, yeah. You know, like, oh, no. Okay. So, he dies in Bran chapter seven. No, All right. Then. Not and then, and, the and by chapter seven, John is, has he already gotten back to the wall? It looks like he's gone out and come back to the wall. So. Yep. That's what it looks like to me. Yep. Yep. So he went out a little bit, you know, wet his feet. Now he's back. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, he's he's yeah, gone we'll north of the wall twice. The first. I didn't hear you, Grant. I'm sorry. What did you say? Uh, so, yeah. He hasn't gone to Craster's Keep then. No, no. He doesn't get to Craster's Keep until. Uh, the third or well the third chapter of clash of kings so yes. we're still in a game of thrones right now so let's just say this is the moment where ned now starts getting shipped off so exactly. takes about two weeks to get to winterfell and then definitely another two to th two to three weeks just because of the terrain to get mm -hmm. to let's say get to molestown and uh castle black so all together and the time in between too because they're going to stop at Winterfell. They'll probably, you know, be there for a few days getting, uh, you know, rations and stuff they need and him saying his goodbyes and giving Rob a couple pep talks. So let's say it takes a month and a half, a month and three weeks. I'm not even going to say two months, even though I pretty much said that before because I'm amazing. So let's say three <laughs> months. So what would that be? We would definitely be around John, I think. At least John two of uh, a clash of kings, and that is so John back across the wall. Nice to put the time up, isn't it? I remember looking at it, and it actually had roughly like the time. Uh, yeah, I don't remember that, but and well, Scott I, looks at that. Uh, yes, uh, Mason John goes. If if it's hard to see on the map there, but there's like a little Y just north of the yep. wall. Yep. So it shows John going to, to the weirwood to take his vows, come back, and then go then go out again to find the bodies and come back. Right, point. and the bodies weren't too far, right? They were, mm -hmm. 
right. the vows was the first one which is a short one to the weirwood and then the other one is the one that bears i think to the right is where they get the bodies so he hasn't gone crashers keep should be right the, the next chapter he leaves so the next chapter after john 2 they're on their way to crashers keep so now it's showing him there no so if i get to john 2 now it's saying john 2 he's there so i don't know what the frig i think he's on his way there um so let's just say he doesn't go god that was really long just to figure that part out all right so let's just say he doesn't go he doesn't go um he stays he stays there castle black his father meets him you know they talk they they converse he gets comfortable He's introduced to Sam, maybe, because Sam's not going anywhere. John doesn't go, I don't think. Uh, not at this point. Um, you know, who else is out there? Oh, I don't know, Master Eamon. I think that's a big connection right there. Maester Eamon and Ned Stark meeting. And maybe they've met before, but like actually living together and getting to converse. I think that's huge. Because Ned isn't... <laughs> Ned knows, you know, who John's parents are. And we're going to assume, we'll assume, you know, R plus L equals J. Okay. We'll assume that's correct. Because until I see it in the books, I'm not going to believe it. Um, But we'll assume that's correct. So now, does John talk to him? I don't, I mean, Ned before he tells John, because he says, I'm going to talk to you about your mother the next time I see you. Yeah. You know, John does he said, hey, now that we're yeah. here, we're wait. what are you waiting for? <laughs> right, right. What's up, Cam? Cam says, hi, everybody. Good to see you. Good to see you, too, Cam. Um, oh, yeah, Maz, I mean, Maz is here. Good to yeah, see you. I think the thing that we have to also take into consideration is, was Ned lying to John? Was was that he's when he said goodbye to him? Was that his final goodbye? Did he ever have any intention of going up to the wall ever again and seeing him? No, I don't believe so. So I don't. I don't think he would. I think he would go up there and he'd be like, "Oh, well, no, I, I I've got to keep the secret." Yeah, and I would think it would. Um, I don't know. I think it would take John coming to Winterfell for Ned, Ned to see him. Like if yeah. Ned did his job in King's Landing and then was let go by Joffrey after dead but nothing you know bad happened and he returned to the north to rule um i don't think he would search out john to tell him about his mom i know he feels a lot of guilt though so if john showed up for a a, a special dinner you know or something like benjamin has done um maybe he tells him but now john they're at the wall north of the wall something maybe i can see him you know yeah. I, mean, I can see him coming up something like that I can see him holding off. Tina, what do you think? I don't know if it would take something dramatic. I just think he'll hold it off for a while. Uh, I'm thinking that he, uh, if he's, if, if Ned is, is, is sent to, to take the black, then I don't see him saying anything to John because he just got in a whole lot of trouble for questioning the King's legitimacy. And now he's going to start talking about, you know, his, uh, uh, his bastard son, possibly also being able to usurp the throne. I just don't yeah. see him saying anything right yeah, away true, and true. If, and if just you know robert dies joffrey ascends to the throne and says thanks for your service ned he goes back home and there's nothing wrong just like um you know what grant says i don't see him bothering to have the conversation with john at all or make no. attempts to do so maybe like you said john comes home kind of like benjamin used to come home and visit um he tell and if he's really really pestering him i do him saying you know what your mother was uh, was a relative or a friend of the family. She died in childhood. He won't lie. He won't lie to him. He just won't well, tell him. He just say, "Okay, you're, you're... okay." No, I can't. What, I can't what, imagine he, Ned lying about. His, his lie would be, "I don't know your. I don't know yeah. who your mother is." Or no, he'd just be like, "I, I, I I'm sorry. I, I can't tell you. I thought I could, but I can't because I can't see him." How it happened? Him and him and Eamon are talking and they're having an argument about something. John takes Eamon's side and he's like, oh, you Targaryens are all alike. <laughs> Something like that <laughs> would be it, right? Um, see, I feel like Ned would actually, you know, I know it's a vow he made supposedly to his sister. He did make a promise. But I could see him getting close with 
uh, Maester Aemon and actually like finding out more about Rhaegar because he was having he was does having Mace dreams Aemon and thinking about him. Huh? Does Maester Aemon know who John is? No, no, but he what, does. What, 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 that would be his grandson. Uh no, his grand nephew. Grand nephew. Yeah, yeah, it would be his grand nephew. Because he was the brother of the Mad King. No, no, no. It would be his great-grand-nephew. It would be his great-grand-nephew because he was he was the brother of Aegon, who was the father of the Mad King. Right. Right? Aegon the Fifth. Yeah. He was one of his kids, right? I'm pretty sure. So. It's so hard because it's between the Amons and the Aegons and the Daemons and the Daemons. I know, I know. I like, I, you know what, uh, though, let's just put a nail in that one for a second because Brian McCann, member for four months, uh, brings up a, a freaking great, great point. A faceless man would be sent to kill Ned. Now, some people might think he's just joking, but think about it. Why was... Why were it was the faceless man in the dungeon and now being sent to the north in the cage, um, Jack and Hagar, uh, before Arya lets him out and frees him, he was bound for the north. So was he sent to kill Ned Stark? Like his his job because you know, they all said Ned was gonna take the black. It wasn't until Joffrey said it out loud, you know, bring me his head. Uh, that anybody else other than maybe Littlefinger knew he was going to do that. Did Cersei or somebody hire a faceless man to kill Ned on the way to the north? You know, there, there. What is the other reason he would be ever in a in a dungeon, the Black Dungeons, and then ever being chained up and sent to the north if he didn't mean to be there as a faceless man? So I'm wondering if somebody already was planning on killing Ned after he left King's Landing. I thought, I, I might be going about this to my memory being wrong and everything, but I thought the ones who had the ability to contact the Faceless Man was, um, uh, Jesus Christ, my brain's not working. Uh, Uni. Yeah, Varys. Varys, yeah. Well, uh, him or Littlefinger. Littlefinger's father's had a lot, father had a lot of dealings with the the uh, the bank in Bravos. So he might have better connections to the faceless men than uh, Varys would, but anybody can ask of the faceless men. They just have to make an offering and ex- or pay the price that the faceless men think it's worth. So is there anyone in King's Landing you think that, I mean, assuming it had to be somebody big, uh, that they would have sent a faceless man to kill. They wouldn't have bothered with Robert because there was already the plan, you know, just to get him drunk and stupid. Right. Uh, so there's really no need to, to do that. Plus also the, the communication involved and in, in a plot to, you know, kill the king. You'd mm. have to tell too many people to get a faceless man hired, I think. Um... Oh, wait a minute. Say that one more time. So um, the reason that, the the faceless man is there. Um, I don't think the faceless man would have been there to ki- to kill Robert, but it would have to be someone you would think of of major importance to bother yes. to spend the money to hire a faceless man. Very but then expensive. again, to have a faceless man uh, come and kill the king, I feel like there'd be too much of a paper trail because it's not like Varys is hopping a boat, going to Bravos and say, hey. I want to yeah. hire a faceless man to do this. It's like, if you need to have higher messengers and how many of these people do you trust? Well, yeah, but you couldn't tell any. Right. Yeah. They're not world assassins, though. They're not like that. They, they're they not going to take out the, the king. That's a big well, job. Well, no, if that's if that's the job and they accept it, they will. But the, they, the risk of them getting caught and then everything coming down on them is too big. Well, they accept some crazy ass jobs through history. Like they're they are known as the, the givers of death. They bring they believe they're doing a service, and if they accept it, um, they have toppled. I mean, I believe the first faceless men caused the um, the downfall of Valeria. You know, like they're they're pretty powerful and not scared to do it. But 
it would have to be for the right pr price and reason in their views. Um, but they'll give anybody the gift of death, king or peasant. They'll give anybody. So I, I don't think, I mean, I definitely don't think he was there to kill Robert. Um, that That's cool that Ned survives and everybody thinks he's dead and he's roaming the north. That would be kind of cool. And Spencer, what up, dog and Zax? Thank you for being here. Um, and lovely Sherry's still saying hello. She's over on Grant's channel, but that's okay because he's so much bigger than me. Sorry, I got into song. Um, and the chorus. And the chorus. I don't want to, like, the chorus would sound really weird. Like, he's so much bigger. I don't mean penis size. Uh, anyways, but uh, no. I'm not it out. <laughs> I'm not ruling it out because he has sent me pictures, but sometimes they look bigger in the picture than real life. Uh, objects in the rear view mirror. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> no, but you think about it, like the faceless man, if he was there to kill Robert, Robert, and he was dead, he wouldn't stay in a dungeon. Faceless men could escape. Faceless, I mean, they're, they're, they're pretty much magical beings. Like they'll, they'll kill somebody, take their face, walk right out. Um, or just like Jack and Agar, who has the ability just to manipulate his face in a time when he needs to just to be somebody different. So they were there and going to the North for a reason to kill somebody. And it, it could have been Ned, could, maybe not, but let's say Ned was never murdered. Uh, and he does end up in the North. I think he would find time to befriend Maester Eamon and Lord Moramont, you know, and I feel like at some point, because Ned in Game of Thrones thinks about, he even says it, I haven't thought about Rhaegar in years, but he, he has fever dreams about him. He thinks about him like Rhaegar would never have been like this, you know, like he, he thinks of how regal he was and how, uh, you know, how he was a good prince. And I think that that would compel him to talk to Maester Eamon about it. And maybe Maester Eamon fills him in on the prophecy, you know, and then he realizes, holy shit, John might be Azor Ahai, you know, would he then <laughs> never tell him or, you know, I don't know. I think it would take him a while to tell him because once again, oh, yeah. he was just involved in a plot to overthrow the king. Um, mm -hmm. But I, I'm not even sure a fever dream would be needed. I mean, Ned's, Ned's mind would require him to befriend Aben and uh, and Mormont because he'd need someone to talk to that was right. at his level. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Like, I mean, Ned is, that's what I mean when I say Ned's that presence. Like, he is at a level where, like, talking to just any normal lord he's Ned Stark, Warden of the North, like Maester Eamon to him. Well, he was, he was, but still they, they keep that kind of hierarchy at the wall. Cause we see in, even in the prologue of game of Thrones, you have a green lordling son who is now in charge of seasoned mm -hmm. men because he's a lordling, you know what I mean? So they do keep that appearance. And I think just his his name and presence would uh, scare some guys from even talking to him. And I just think Maester Eamon wouldn't give a shit and he would respect him for who he is. You know, he knows he's a Targaryen. What would that do to John's um, ego to all of a sudden be, you know, he's a bastard son, but he's now the son of one of the yeah. highest ranked men in uh, the night. I think it, I don't know. I think it would actually, two things it may take some of the pressure off of him but it also would stunt his growth there because he wouldn't want to do anything that would make his father look bad what do you think grant yeah um is he when he was born what's the timeline with his parents were they married beforehand well uh, they've never said i it's assumed that if he's going to be legitimate, they had to be married either in front of a heart tree or by um, by the faith. So yeah. I I always assumed if it is R plus L, 
Yeah. Well, uh, if they were, I, I have a feeling that the Sparrow was the one that married them. The High Sparrow. Because he was traveling. What? Could you explain your theory with that? Cause, uh, so, I we, find we find, before. the only reason I have this theory is because we, we the, the little we know of the Sparrow is that he traveled the Seven Kingdoms for 20 years. And he just, he just traveled. And, but he had to be somewhere first. We don't know if he, he could be a target. We don't know who he is, but what I, I just have a weird feeling. There was some Rhaegar him connection. He married them. And after the death of Rhaegar, he just started roaming the seven kingdoms to keep himself out of the public eye. I don't know who he could be, but. I have a feeling he somehow was connected to the marriage because someone has to be able to say, yes, I saw them get married. Not, not that John is, is the baby because if anything, he's a bastard. Someone has to be present right. at that marriage. So to make John, if that is George's plan to make John a Targaryen and the legitimate son Someone had to marry him, and who better than the guy who was roaming around the countryside for over 20 years when that war was less than 15 years ago? So could he have been the one that married him? I don't know. There's something about the Sparrow that I, I think we haven't learned yet, and that would that be kind would of a cool, cool link. That that would be really, really cool because, I mean, if they if they weren't married or, like you said, if there wasn't someone who who could swear to them or attest to them being married, he would just be another one of Rhaegar's bastards. And you assume Rhaegar had some bastards out there. Right. Right. I don't know. Yeah. Oh yeah. Rhaegar definitely probably had a couple bastards. I mean, he was a prince, mm -hmm. you know, John Khan probably wanted to have one of his bastards. Um, that would be awkward. But yeah, Cam says, uh, sporting news. I agree about the Sparrow more than meets the eye there. I think I agree with you. I just, the, the only evidence we have is that he traveled and maybe he was in that area when even in Dorne, when they were going to get married. I don't know. I have to look into this one a little bit more. Every sparrow portion of the book, I'm going to have to reread because I, I do know he, he was like a wandering, you know, faith, um, the, what, what are they not the septas the septin you know and then he he comes to king's land king landing to help the sick and the poor and cersei makes the dumb decision to raise him to high sparrow or high septa so there's a reason for it not just a f with cersei and and bring back the faith um because it, it would make more sense that this very generous kind help the needy. Uh, we don't need to be, you know, rich and op opulent, uh, like the last high Septon. Um, but he yet is raising a military for what reason, maybe to get back at the Lannisters and the Baratheons for overthrowing someone he cared about and, and, ha and killing him. You know, there's a lot so of, think, you think he's doing all this for right now? I think he is. Maybe he is a Targaryen. I don't know, but maybe he just really cared about Rhaegar in some way. Because people loved if they if you knew Rhaegar, you loved him. It seemed, um, and I I just wonder if that's because you know, or he's just a freaking zealot and wants to take over and make it a faith based kingdom like a true, you know, uh, uh, yeah, I couldn't think of the word oligarchy, right? Is that correct? I think, oh, I think you're right. I think you're right. I do love this one. Uh, Man Squatch says, one thing is for sure. If Ned isn't beheaded, then Arya doesn't kill the Night King. <laughs> That's so dumb. Oh, Scott, just use the audio books. Yeah, I know. I, You know what, dude? It's hard. Oh, maybe rehearing stuff, because I, I have re-listened to some of uh fire and blood but like anything new it's hard for me to follow 
uh, audio. I, like I have to be able to look because I, I don't know. Excuse me. I'm I got ADHD, but I'm also That's like old man. Yeah, I'm old. Just let your dick. It's been happening to me since I was young. You dick. Uh, but even reading, like I'll read a whole chapter and be like, what the hell did I just read? You know, I have to go back and reread it. But listening, like if I'm not just sitting there imagining what's going on, I, I don't pay attention. I've been yeah, trying that. I think, the, I think the beautiful voice of uh, Roy DeTrice is enough imagination for me. He's yeah, valid point. Word, so, um, valid I'll point. Always, I'll, whenever I'm going back, I will always go back and do that. And I'll play it at one, one and a half speed to two, depending yeah. on what chapter it is. Uh -huh. um, especially Game of Thrones, he's much slower with his, with his dialogue. Um, yeah. But yeah, yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. So, okay. Let's, so... Let final question on this one: Does does he tell John or not? And, and cause well, I don't think he does. I think he does. at all, at all. I I think there would be some weird circumstances where he thinks they're going to die, like they're trapped on an ice thing or something, or they're both mortally wounded or something like that, and um, John will be able to get it out of him. That'll be the only scenario I see him doing it. So okay. He's sent to the wall. Let's look now at other things. Rob doesn't have to, you know, go on the offensive. He's not going to be the king of the north. He's just Rob Stark, Lord. Well, I mean, he's Lord of Winterfell. Hopefully the warden of the north. I don't know if they he'd probably keep them as wardens of the north. So. Carstark's not as angry at him anymore. Right. Carstark's, you know, aren't beheaded. Um, Boltons don't have the opportunity they want to take over will Tywin down the road, play the long game and do something to wipe them out. I don't know. Like him going to the North. I think the biggest thing about that would be, or to the wall would be the others and his, his way of defending the, the realm of men. Cause now you're when they're sending info down to other places saying that the others are real, people aren't believing them. But if Ned Stark, said the letter like maybe they believe him you no, know even if like the guy's lost it he spent too many years as a lord now he's down there and yeah, now he's up there and yeah the cold got to him you know I what mean, it is i just thought of it it's a theocracy is a religious one theocracy sorry i'm so glad i thought of that i yeah. saw i thought you said oligarchy you know i did but then i said oh it okay the the there. So, yeah, yeah me too yeah. i thought about it yeah okay um yeah, no, yes. I had to Google what it was the other day when someone mentioned it. I'm like, I think I know what that is. So I Google it. <laughs> so, Tina, do you think he would tell him? And if he does or doesn't, what happens next when it comes to the North, uh, the White Walker threat? Yep, I agree. I agree too, Tina. Uh, so you know that what was amazing. Gonna happen? He's gonna, um, he's gonna she go talks way too much. Fight. But he's gonna, he's gonna save, he's gonna save Sam and um, and uh, Frodo. I mean, not Frodo. Um, Sam, Sam and uh, John. Um, John. And then get an arrow, and then he's gonna die, and then then he's gonna call. He's gonna do the exact same speech he did at Lord of the Lord of the Rings, but do it to John because he'll be my uh, the be my king. <laughs> so. Okay, <laughs> Tina, you are not late or gay. What's up, Flaccid? Um, so what do you think? Oh, release the McCracken is here. Love it. Uh, um, I, I agree. I agree with you guys. What you guys are saying, and the fact that he would not uh, tell John, especially once again, because he just got in trouble for trying to overthrow a king. He's not going to, you know, he's not going to talk about that at all. I think if he was dying, he'd say something, or possibly if John was fatally wounded, and he says, "Okay, you know, Dad, seriously, I'm going to ask you this one more time because I only have one more right. time to ask you. You know, who's my mother?" So. See, I um, think he'll end up telling him. I just don't think he would tell him right away. I just yeah. I mean, it, five years, ten years. Does it matter how many years down the line? I mean, it could happen eventually, but um, mate. I mean, I don't know because if the White Walkers are coming or the Whites are coming and they they're worried, they could die at any moment. Just right. Then I was thinking the same thing. The necessity to tell him because, like, also, yeah. Also, with the moves of Danny and her dragons, like he's a Targaryen. He's a threat to her. Maybe like that might be how he thinks, but also let's just say where I was going before is like Ned gets this bond with Maester Aemon because he respects him. He's, you know, been around forever. 
and maybe, you know, after finding out about Rhaegar, more about Rhaegar, feels the need, okay, I got to tell John, and maybe, or he just tells Maester Aemon, and then he explains to him about the, you know, oh, well, Rhaegar and I believed in this prophecy, and your son might be the key to killing the White Walkers. Uh, like, there's so much that can happen if Ned just tells John, or if he just tells, you know, Maester Eamon, or he finds yeah, out about the information. making the right decision at the right time. Right, yeah, Ned is always making those right decisions. Um, but yeah, I don't know. Uh, I think he would tell him, and I think he would tell him before the threat of Mance Raider and the attack on Castle Black, because uh, that would still happen. Maybe even on more of a bigger scale, because they know Ned Stark's there. And to, to the wildlings, Ned Stark is a beheader. He is, uh, he's probably, you know, stories of, they tell their kids at night to scare them. Oh, I could see that, yeah. You know what I mean? So, maybe he tells them before that attack. And then Stannis shows up, because maybe Stannis still attacks King's Landing. But then would would he call Robin down to defend that god there's so much that can happen this oh, what if is good. messing with my head do you do you not think that he would not want to go up to king's landing first and get ned to rally the north say that ned again was the one that notified him do you, do you not think that he will try and um get ned he'll go up to the wall and get ned to come down and say well i'll give you clemency when i take over so restore your house you get the men of the north to, to right no, no, I think he would definitely. Oh, that's. Oh, attack, I see what you're saying. So, from the sea and from the top, it will be a two pronged attack. No, attack. So you think he bypasses Blackwater Bay altogether, and realizes I can go. Yeah, yeah. I think 100. percent He'll go because if Ned's still alive, he yeah. has a major ally. Yeah. But does it was the one does Mormont his brother trusted more than anyone else? Does Mormont say, "Yeah, sure, fine, you can have Ned," because I'm gonna let you over you know override what you know the crowned king yeah that's a tough one as, too it's a sentence you know that is a tough one too because um it's from his house so well the thing is is they're not supposed to have any dealings with the seven kingdoms like what happens politically uh and ned being who ned is he he would probably tell stannis i can't get involved Mm-hmm. You know, at first, at least. Um, no, might, Rob wouldn't he, be, he at might war. be able to convince. He might, he might be able to convince Mormont to say, "Hey, you know what? I need to borrow Ned because I'm going to go down to Winterfell, and I'm going to treat with with Rob, or at least get a letter and, from Ned." Exactly. You yeah, know, some something. some way for Ned to give him some kind of advice. Because um, you know. everyone knows that Ned. I mean, even if he took back what he said, it's out there. He sent it to all the seven kingdoms that, you know, Stannis is the rightful king and these, they're bastards. So you can't forget about that. And it's it's, uh, the most noblest guy in the world. Mm Mm-hmm. I mean, that's how he's known, right? Yeah, that's that's how he's known. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, and I, I don't think Rob would be at all. Yeah, that's a... I mean, how, how, I mean, I could see Ned saying, hey, I can't get involved because I swore an oath to the Night's Watch. I can't break my word. Yeah. You know what else you got to think about, too? Let's just knock that out. Ned's, Ned's up at the north. So now... Are the Boltons, would they dare still attack Winterfell, you know, uh, with Ramsay? Because there's no way Rob's leaving Winterfell. So, and then Theon's not leaving Winterfell. So right. you don't have to worry about the Ironborn. Does, Bran doesn't go on his journey <laughs> to become, you know, to meet the, the uh, Three-Eyed Raven. Most likely he doesn't leave. I mean, still crippled. His, you know, he, how does he develop that 
Wait, does that, that skill mean that all has... of a sudden Hodor's able to speak again? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but it, yeah, right. No, but so, like, so it's wow. possible we could have a uh, a war of the three kings. Yeah, uh, unless Renly doesn't feel like he declares himself because, well, maybe not. No, Renly would still declare himself. He would skip town and declare himself. Um, so yeah, it'd be the Didn't three he kings. Advise Ned, hey, you know, skip yep. town with me, and yep. You know, that's why yeah, so it would be the brothers and Joffrey. So it would be the, the War of the Three Kings because the Iron Islands wouldn't get involved because yep. they don't, even though, you never know though, with Ned being gone, is he emboldened to attack? I don't know because he doesn't give a shit about his kid, uh, Theon, but right. his his sister, you know, she would probably be leading it and she does, but the Boltons can't do shit. I mean, they could try with Ramsay. But this is a different Winterfell, you know, like it's going to be manned by not just uh, a small group of, you know, the leftover guards. It's the full Winterfell army. Well, maybe not army, but the full set of whoever was already in Winterfell, those guards. So it's now, not very easy. Just for, now, if Joffrey does not let Rob retain, uh, you know, let the Stark family retain Warden of the North, who would be in their place. Could it be Bolton? Yeah. Sorry, um, I got an idea. Yeah. Littlefinger's in his ear, and who's Littlefinger in tight with? You think he would give Littlefinger Winterfell? No, I don't think he would. I think what he would do is he would um, give it to the Reach. No. No, the North wouldn't have it. I know Ned has been disgraced, but they would be like, look, there's his son. Rob is a Stark. The Starks are the Lords of the North. I think that would make them want to succeed. If someone, if they were like, okay, we're going to put, uh, anybody else, but a Northern man in this seat, you know, with Rob being alive, I can't see them that it wouldn't be a smart move on Tywin to replace them. Huh? Give it to Sweet Robin. He'll do it. Yeah, no. I still don't think so. I yeah, think they'll just know, they I would mean, just let Rob. Yeah. I mean and Kate and I mean Caitlin did her job, you know, four boys. So it yeah. would take a lot to to mess up who would be in charge of Winterfell. I just didn't know if there were any of the other any other of the houses in the north could even be considered. Okay, time out. I think, I think Mason might be right. But Rob, this uh, uh, Mason, he was already attacking before the beheading? Or did he call the banners and they're preparing? Because I know he was planning on no matter what, going down there and rescuing his father and sisters, which was, you know, I, the young man's approach to it, you know. But Well, in the book, it makes sense because he's 14 years old. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But did he start fighting already? I can't remember. Yeah, he did. Because I remember him crying about his father, like him crying off by himself because he didn't want the other men to see him in Cat Catelyn. It's a Catelyn chapter that brings it up. And then she's like, well, kill them all. Um, so he was already warring before the, oh shit. Does Now does he stop warring because his father is sent to the wall? Oh, yeah, I mean, I think he would have to. He'd have to. He would if, have if to. Not, if not, Ned would Ned, find him. It would be oh. his, Well, also, it would be his fault then if Ned gets killed. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh huh. I mean, because that was their major negotiation. If, if a war was already in place for them to turn around and say, hey, you know, we'll give you your father back, we'll give you your sister back. Not mm -hmm. father back, but we won't, you know. He's not going to die, so the only right. the only complaint Rob would have is, you know, you got my sister betrothed to somebody that you know we don't like. Yeah, yeah, no, that's it true. Happens all the time in war, right. when they you know keep uh, members of other houses. It is hot in here. Sorry, uh, Brian McMahon says little is known of the history of this man. He's talking about the Sparrow. Uh, he claimed to have been a traveling Septon. 
uh, tending to half a hundred villages that were too small to have their own septs and septa. He walked a route between each village where he performed the traditional duties of a septon, such as naming newborn children, absolving sins, and performing marriages. I don't know if there's a theory out there of this one yet, but I believe it. Uh, and I should get credit for that by everybody. <laughs> yeah, you're right. There was a, a, but okay. So there was, there was fighting before the beheading, but what happens now when Ned is sent to the North? Does he, he doesn't claim that he's King or does this shit happen without Ned being able to control any of it? It's out of his hands now. Cause I know one of his reasons was to rescue Sansa from the, the Lannisters. Shit. I don't know. That's a tough one. I, I'm just trying to figure out what happens at the wall. I didn't even get... I, I put, like, the... What if the Starks of Winterfell... I should just do one of them a week because this is a difficult thing to answer and we've been talking about it for over an hour. Um. Yeah, I don't... Oh, God damn, that's a tough one. I think Ned leaving would get word to Rob to, like, dude... Just defend the North. Don't go on the offensive. You know, like, I, I'm alive. Your sister's yeah. maybe you, not you, safe, you but... Don't, don't overstep. Look, what, use me as an example. Right, right. And I can't imagine that Catelyn would want a 14-year-old to continue to go to war if well, her did father's she, life was on the line. Did she still take Tyrion? Like she was supposed to go back to Winterfell and help Rob, and she decides, "Ah, eh, screw that! I'm gonna, I'm gonna take Tyrion to be eerie." Where is at this point in time? Uh, Tyrion uh, is on his way back from the north. Uh, Tyrion is at King's Landing. Oh yeah, I can put it up on the map. My bad. Yeah. Uh, Tyrion Lannister. Boom. Yeah, he's in, well, this is a uh, John two. So this is when, yeah, this is after Ned's. Well, on at Ned's death, where is he? Uh, uh, uh King's Landing. Yep. Because Ned dies back in. Well, let's go all the way back. Game of Thrones. Oh, maybe he isn't yet. I You're right. He was, no, no, he was still on his way back. Because yeah, Ed, I know. Um, this is where Ned dies right after this father, one, I think. Yeah, Tyrion is at the crossroads in at a Clash of Kings, uh, episode one, the Arya episode. And no, Ned but he's and... asking. He's asking when Ned died, which is Game of Thrones chapter sixty four, uh, after his after. The Tyrion chapter, because it shows him alive and then it shows him dead in oh, Arya okay, five. The... So okay, so he's in between the twins and the crossroads in. Well, no, it right. shows him already at the Eyrie. So Arya five, where Ned just died, it shows no, that she already it's, took it's, him. Do you see where the Do you see where the T oh, is yeah. though? The T is where he cur- he's currently at right now, which is right there. Oh, up on the King's Road. Oh, yeah. right, 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 right. So why the hell was he over in the area already? That makes no yeah, sense. Yeah, that, that, that doesn't make sense either. That, you know, know, that's, that's, a, that's a glitch in the Matrix. I think. Yeah, that's weird. Be. Why does it show that? Because he should be at the end in the crossroads coming down to that. Because she meets him. Oh, you know why? Because uh, you need to... Um, uh, uh, clear uh, Eddard and John so the gray isn't on top of the red. That's the problem. Yeah, but it now still shows see. him going to the Erie oh. already. That's true. So that's weird. Why is he there? Uh, let's go back one, two, three. All right. So. Okay. They show him a Game of Thrones uh, chapter 38. He's in the Eerie. Yeah, because Catelyn... All right, so that makes kind of sense. Because Catelyn, by uh, chapter 55, which is Catelyn 8, she's 
already meeting Rob uh, with Brendan Revers, uh, Brendan, I'm sorry, Tully at, at his base camp. So let's just put her up there. Boom. All right. So she's at Mo Kalen or back at Mo Kalen. So it shows her. Uh, that's the wall. What am I doing? Okay. Back this shit up. Wow. She went like all around. What the hell is this shit? Uh, she, oh yeah. Cause she took the, she took a ship down to see Ned. She went back up, went to the Erie. Now, for some reason, this is showing Kat and Mo Kalen and I guess Tyrion on his way back from the Erie. That makes sense. No, not really. But because he, he did go into the mountains and meet the mountain men. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this map is good, but it, it confuses me because my head can't figure it out. All right. Well, whatever. She... She would still take Tyrion. Shit would still go down. Rob would still be at war. And I don't know if Ned could stop it. There she is. Jane, answer all these questions for us, please. Slightly off topic. Oh, okay. Uh, but I wish the Starks and Car Starks had not fallen out. Their union would have been the future of the Starks. Well, I don't think they would in this version. With Ned... Oh, maybe they would. Because Rob, if Rob keeps fighting, he might make the same mistakes. Yeah, um, I don't agree with that. And what? Well, and don't forget in the books, it everyone blames Cap, but I swear in the books, it's Ruth Bolton that releases Jamie. Right? It's not Cat in the books; it's Ruth Bolton. He's the one that makes the deal when he gets to Heron Hall, or do they capture him again? I don't. I don't remember. Um. Yeah, Rob is a dumbass. His mom, to some degree, <laughs> is dumbass as his mom is to some degree. It's good to see you, Jane. You could join us any time for one of these. We'll get together and talk about that. Hope all is well. Um, yeah, it's my brain is like hurting thinking about this. Maybe I should do a little more research next time and know where everybody is at every point in the freaking books. Um, good luck with that. Yeah, right. I think in order to, in order for uh, Rob to stop warring, would have been is if Catelyn was never part of it, if she wasn't there advising yeah. him, because I think well, he first, listened to her too the much. The less she's around, the better it is. Yeah, definitely. And first, I just want to say Jane can't remember either, so it makes me feel better. Um, <laughs> but yeah, yeah, George is going to take so long; I can't remember. Um, uh I'm looking up the wiki. On the on, it says so in Classic Kings, Caitlin makes the controversial decision to set Jamie free in the hopes that it will exchange for his daughter. So it was it was her then. Who released him? Yeah, I swear it was. Because doesn't he make a deal with him? Um, it would make sense that he would capture him later on. Okay, or that's what happens because he's with Brienne. Brienne. Yeah. He's with Brienne when he gets captured at Heron Hall. Yeah. Okay, so Roos is the one that releases him after he loses his hand. Okay, they get caught after she releases him. That's they, right. Yeah, they Duh. get caught by the, yep. Yeah, yep. the pirate, the uh, pirate fleet called the... Hogar, um, Robin Hood. The, the and, brazen um, beasts or whatever. Anyway. Right? Yeah. Yeah, the brazen I, I, beasts I or something like that. Um, yeah, I, I can't believe I forgot that. Uh, let's see. Yeah. So in a storm of swords, chapter 37, uh, Jamie and Brianna are in the bathhouse in Heron hall, watching themselves before meeting Roose Bolton. So they just got recaptured. Um, Uh, do, do, do. uh Jamie feels dizzy in the hot bath and begins to tell Brienne his story and he tells the story about uh Ares in the Battle of the Bells where Robert won. Um uh, and this is their greatest threat since the Blackfire Pretenders. So yeah, okay, this is and Ty Tywin Lannister uh and 
Bruce have their little thing going on. Okay, makes more sense. I totally. And this is where Kyburn comes in. Because he is the maester at, oh, excuse me, maester at um, Heron Hall. That's right, yeah. I forgot that. Yeah, that's kind of a big deal, too. Kyburn coming into the story. That dude is definitely he shady. If he doesn't come in, there's a lot of shit that's different as well. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Kyburn. Kyburn definitely has some connections, but I don't think uh, he's more connected to, like, I think he worked as a maester over in Essos for, um, for like one of these different sales swords group, sell swords group. And it could have been the one that the red Viper was involved in. He, he's, he's involved with the Dornish somehow. Yeah. Uh, have you ever, do we have, we don't have wildfire in the story without Kyburn. We don't have the the mountain becoming... Um, Frankenstein. Right, the mountain becoming, uh, yeah, Frankenstein strong. Frankenstein. He's a yeah. strong boy. Um, no wonder he likes Targaryens. Yeah. <laughs> Man, <laughs> that, uh, there's a lot. So let's say, let's say Rob does keep fighting. So does it end the same way? Does he, does he actually like, cause now with Ned alive, he's going to think differently. Like he made a vow to an oath to the, the phrase to marry one of the girls. Would he then, you know, my dad's at the wall and I'm, I'm going to bang this chick or well, I, you know, I have to keep my, my oath and marry this girl. Jane Westerling, would she be as tempting if he knew his father would ha would be judging him? Because I mean, no matter what, he he believes his father's innocent. He believes his father, you know, uh, and he had to lie to save his life in Sansa and Arya's. So that's why he took the black. So would he get involved with another woman if he knew he had to honor the Frey deal? And maybe with the presence of his dad, he doesn't do that, and he does marry a Frey. Yeah, I think he married Frey. Yeah, so that changes everything because now you have their their access from south to north, their army. Uh, Roos Bolton doesn't have that connection with the Freys anymore, so he's he's definitely hampered in his overtaking of the north, and always knowing that. Eddard could just say "f this" if he does something to his family, and he leaves. Well, if the if the red wedding happened, then Ned's leaving the wall. He's coming down. He's taking off his head. Plain and simple. Plain and simple. I agree. Yeah. So now, now the he's have, he's, now he's going to have two armies. He's going to have the because he, he could convince he could convince the guys at the wall to come down with him. Yeah, uh, and the phrase offered him their most beautiful sister daughter niece. Yeah, girl too. And she, she's probably pretty hot. I think he would have been smart just to do that, like marry whatever the hottest one is before he even left the the um, twins. But that was dumb of him. Um, kind of like his his father and mother did, you know, a quick marriage because a war was going on. Mm -hmm. uh, and he may decide to do that because he knows he needs their power. Then if he has a bastard, it's no big deal because he's already married. You know, because the whole thing is, it's not her carrying an heir, it's that he married her. So, maybe... Right, because she wasn't, uh, she in the book, she's not pregnant, so it's not like, oh, I, you know... I need oh, to no, she is. Honor. She, she, but no, no, is there. it... No, not, not, at the, not... She's not pregnant before they get married, is what I'm trying to say. Oh, no, I thought he knocked her up and got married. Because oh, he knocked okay. her up. Yeah. He thought oh, that thought was the honorable thing to do. Be, oh, I just thought he married her because he um, took her virginity. You know, dishonored her. Yeah. Oh, I never read it that way. I always read she was pregnant, and that's why he married her. Because gotcha. why else? That was the, oh. that was under the, the thing that I got. It's like, whoops, bit done this the wrong way. Better make it legit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> why can't they make these things different colors? <laughs> hey, why is Rob Gray and Catelyn? That's dumb. Um, they're they're Stark. The the yeah. yeah, maybe use blue. I don't know. Um, <laughs> so he's at the wall. He, uh, the wildlings attack 
they defend the wildlings me you know does stannis still have to even come up there because will stannis attack yeah he would still probably attack king's landing he believes he's the rightful king shit may go down the same way um he realizes you know there's an army up north and if he can get ned stark's approval rob would join him you know what i mean so there is a lot that would happen Mm -hmm. the same but just a little different i don't think rob i think rob would make it a little longer at least um and then i do believe at some point he tells john definitely before the whites attack because if he is talking to um maester aemon and he he doesn't even tell maester aemon about you know uh rhaegar and lyanna he does find out because of talking about Rhaegar because he's been in his mind and he just, you know, someone who knew him, they start talking and he finds out that Rhaegar believed in this prophecy and now the whites are real and he may have the one that could defeat them and John, he's going to have to tell him because it just adds all up. Even though George writes prophecies completely different, you know, they never really are what they seem, but in in universe, Ned might feel like he has to tell John because John might be the only key to defeating them. Uh, and then we really don't know because he didn't finish the books, so we can't go even much farther than that. Now, who survives coming back from Craster's? Because they overthrow, they kill Craster, overthrow, kill Lord Moramount, and overthrow, you know, take over. But then the the wives, sisters, sister wives, um, end up killing the mutineers, and a lot of them yeah. dying. You know, I don't, do I any, don't see it. That, that shouldn't play out too differently. I don't think. No, I don't think so either. I don't think either. I'm just wondering who's. You know, it, would there be because it wasn't Gren and those like John's friends, Pippin, Pippin, <laughs> Pip, uh, all them he, there. He was there with Mary. Yeah, Mary and uh, yeah. Sam, Sam and Frodo. Um, you know, do they make it back? All right, let's see where Sam, Sam Wise the Brave. All right, so if we go ahead to a game of or. John too. He's all okay. So he's at White Tree, on their way to Craster's Keep. I'm gonna take off everybody else at the moment. And where's John three? Ooh, there we go. So he's up there. All right. So yeah, let's say Sam had to go. Do you think Sam would go? I think he. Eh? No matter what, there's other people up there. So they're coming back. Hopefully some of his friends that didn't did live still lived. They find out that the whites are real, like they're real, real. Um, and they're prepping for that battle. And there's really not much more we could talk about because we don't know where else it goes. But but Bran definitely doesn't, I don't believe, goes north. He has no need to. Well, I mean, the Three Eye Raven's probably telling him to go. Because don't forget, he, his visions first started after he fell. So that would have happened. So maybe at some point he convinces Catelyn, like, I need to go visit Dad. Uh, I, just need, I know I need to go north. I don't know why. Yeah, that's a weird one because she's a woman. She wouldn't believe him. Um, you know, women. Uh, yeah, we suck. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't yeah, know. I know. <laughs> oh, look at this. I have an emblem. The house is full. Oh, man. That's awesome. Hold on. What? Where'd you. What? Well, look, I, like the ba- I like the background. It looks really cool. Yeah, it looks it's very cool. Spark. Can you put it on as an overlay? I did not. I'll give it no, up. no, I, I meant could you? Oh, could, yeah. Probably. Yeah, I mean, you probably could, right? Probably. Hold on, while you do that. In the dim light of his chamber, Eddard Stark, the Lord of Winterfell, sat in contemplative silence, 
The weight of the secret he had uncovered lay heavy on his shoulders. Cersei Lannister's children, the heirs to the Iron Throne, were not begotten of King Robert, but born of incest. It was a truth that could shatter the realm, a truth too dangerous to be revealed hastily. Ned knew he must wait for Robert, his old friend and king, to return from his hunting trip. Only to him could such a... Wow. That is so cool, man. That is so yeah, cool. I, I mean, because at the moment it's just a spork of iron fire. Uh, yeah, <laughs> it's the spork of fork and fire. Um, <laughs> you know, that's cool though. I like that. We're gonna keep that background for now. Um, yeah, I don't know. I, I, I all I thank you. All I could think is that we rock and. Um, did some pretty cool stuff. Oh, look at that. I want to make you the big one and me the little one. Do you, do you so, like your house emblem? Then, that I did? The what? The house emblem. My, that's, that's my avatar. I was, I was looking at that, man. That is pretty cool. So that's the, av okay, hold on. Let's blow that up too. So that's what, house spork? House spork. I like it. I definitely like it. Yeah, I showed you this, right? My, uh, my wife and kids got me a, uh, oops, sorry. Thank you for doing that. A couple of years ago, the uh, house spork um, coat hangers, or you can hang your coat and stuff from there. I was. That's like that. cute. They always think about me. Now, they're so good at gifts. They are so awesome. They are. They got the. Um, I don't know. If Jane saw this. They got my little uh, sporking uh, Funko Pop. I'm holding That's a cell awesome. phone. Yeah. Are you wearing so, like uh, cargo, cargo shorts? Yep, and sandals. And flip flops. Yep. <laughs> That's and awesome. Then, uh, the phone in my hand is the funny part because I always have a phone in my hand. Pretty good. <laughs> I mean, the beard's a little darker than mine. And then my wife also got this. That's so cool. It reminds me of the... I don't know if you've ever watched them, the YouTube shorts where they have the little ball that uh, they do the CGI yeah, so yeah, it gets bouncing down, down, down the... Yeah. My daughter yeah. has yep. those ones, yeah. That's definitely yeah, cool. cool. Yeah, it is cool. Uh, when will those be available for mass sales? <laughs> the Sporks? I would <laughs> love that. That would be awesome. Dan's World of Wonder. That's a great name. What are you doing? I have no clue what I'm doing. We were talking about um, what if with Ned Stark surviving and going take the black up at the wall. But I think we're going to wrap it up there because uh, I got to work early in the morning, hour and a half ain't bad. Next week we might do another Stark or we might jump to a different family because I'm liking the what if what ifs, unless we get major news with house of the dragon or we find out that George uh, is going is finished with the book. Cause then there's just going to be a whole episode of me crying. Probably um, tears of joy. What if the series never died? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Thank what you, Jane. It came out 14 years ago. Yeah. Right. I, I think we're going to get it Christmas this year too, Jane. I really do. I really, really do. Um, but I've said that a couple Christmases in a row, You've but, said that uh, for 11 years. I did not say it last Christmas. Maybe I did. You did. Maybe early in the year. All right. Yep. It was in January. That's the hard January. Wow. Well, January, whatever it is, 15th, we're doing it. But next week, everybody's a birthday celebration. So we aren't going to do a what if, uh, next week is my official, my actual 48th birthday. So we're going to do a little uh, live stream, just BSing and having a good time. So if you're a Song of Ice and Fire from, uh, fan, uh, two weeks from now, we'll be doing that. But other than that, we'll just be talking about most likely aluminum sporkish type stuff. You know, ancient aliens, ancient lost history, conspiracies, Hollywood, um, and uh, hopefully having a couple cool guests on too with us. So it'll be us three and a couple guests, hopefully. Um, if they can do it and, uh, Jane, you're invited. So make plans. Come on. You can come on. I've heard you played games with other people. It's my birthday. Uh, I'll shoot you a text or something. Hopefully everybody else is doing well. Thank you guys for joining me. Um, I love it. Um, we will go out with, uh, a fun, our intro, I guess. 
and that awesome not spork spork um thumbnail that i'm probably going to use a spork of land fire (laughs) yeah it looks like an owl a spork of land fire (laughs) good night everybody